everyone, it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make what I call the cross square prayer cloth. Now a friend of mine remembered that I had made these quite a few years ago and asked me if I had ever done a video. Well, I had not done a video, so I thought since it's Easter time and spring, it'd be a great time to revisit this pattern. So we updated the pattern, we're adding new pictures, and of course this brand new video. The cross square can be used to add to a scarf or a blanket, a lapkin, a bag, anything that you want to use the square for. What my friend uses it for is when she takes a meal or something over to one of her friends that's homebound, she likes to leave a square just like this and, and maybe their favorite color or something. Some of them are veterans and she'll make them in red, white, and blue. And she likes to leave them there that way they can be reminded that she cares about them and if they need her all they have to do is call. To make a square, or many squares, you just need a little bit less than an ounce of yarn. I'm using Red Heart Super Saver in worsted weight, medium weight number four, and I've done them in these pastel colors, and I'm going to be using this green today. And I'm going to be doing some more of these. I'm gonna make mine into a lapgan. The pattern itself is all stitched in single crochets, except for the cross portion, which is done in what I call a double crochet bobble stitch. And don't worry, I'll walk you through every step of it so you won't have any trouble figuring that portion out. We're going to be stitching with our H hook today. It's a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle to weave those ends in, and of course, a pair of scissors. We're going to be starting our square at the bottom and working our way up in rows. We're going to begin with our slip knot and then we're going to chain 20 chains. Now I do recommend that you chain this initial chain a little bit looser so that your square doesn't pucker at the bottom. When you're making your square, if you chain this initial chain too tightly, it could bring the bottom of it in and then it wouldn't lay straight as a nice square. That's why we wanna do that just a little bit looser. We're going to begin stitching in the second chain from the hook. We don't count the loop that's on our hook, we count the next chain and then we'll go in the next one. Hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both loops. That's a single crochet, and we're going to stitch one single crochet in each of the chains across. Once you've stitched a single crochet in each stitch across, you'll have 19 single crochets because we began stitching in the second chain from the hook. We're going to chain one and the chain one does not count as a stitch, it's just a turning chain and it's the same thing throughout the project. We turned, we made our chain one and we're going to put a single crochet in each of the single crochets across and again you'll have 19 single crochets and you're going to have 19 stitches on each row because we're not going to be adding or subtracting any stitches. One single crochet in each of the single crochets across. I completed that row of single crochets. I'm going to chain one and turn. So now we have two solid rows of single crochet. Now on this next row, we're going to be adding that bobble stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a single crochet in the first nine 
stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now our next stitch is going to be our bobble stitch. And the way we do the double crochet bobble stitch is you yarn over, go in the stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops. We leave the last loop on our hook. We'll do that again. Yarn over, go in the same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and only go through the first two loops. Now we have three loops on our hook and then we'll repeat that. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops. So now it looks like we have our initial loop and three unfinished double crochets. So we have four loops. Yarn over and just pull through all four of those loops. That's our double crochet bobble stitch. Now what we'll do in the next stitch <clears throat> is we'll push that bobble stitch forward and we'll do a single crochet in the next stitch. Now if your bobble stitch happens to go backwards, it's not a problem. You just pop it forward. And then we'll do the remainder, which will be nine single crochets on this side. and single crochet, or I'm sorry, and chain one. I said single crochet, I meant chain one. All right, so row three should look like this. Nine single crochets, our bobble stitch, and nine single crochets. We've done our chain one, and now we're going to turn our work. And you'll notice that the bobble stitch is the front side of our work, and we're working across the back side. And we're going to place one single crochet in each stitch across. So we'll put a single crochet in those first nine single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you're going to want to put one single crochet in the back of this bobble. And if you look at the top, this will help you know where to put your stitch. You put it right in that stitch at the top there. You don't want to accidentally add or subtract a stitch here because you want to keep your stitch count at 19. All right, and then we'll stitch one single crochet in these last nine stitches. There we go. chain one and turn. And so the way that this pattern is going to work is we're going to make five bobble stitches and we're going to have a row of nine with a bobble stitch and then nine and then the next row we'll single crochet across. Then we'll repeat a row of nine single crochets, our bobble stitch, and then nine single crochets across. And we're going to repeat this four more times so that we'll have five of these bobble stitches. Let's do another one together. Nine single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now the next stitch we'll do that double crochet bobble stitch. Yarn over, <clears throat> go in and pull up a loop, yarn over and just go through the first two. I do recommend that you stitch this bobble stitch just a little bit loose so that it helps you when it comes to getting it all together. If you're stitching really tightly, sometimes it's kind of hard to work with that many loops and stitches together. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through the next two. We have those four loops on our hook. Yarn over and go through all four of those loops. And then you can push it forward or back, it doesn't matter. 
put your single crochet in the next stitch and then just pop that bobble to the front. You want all your bobble, bobbles on the front of your work. All right, so there's our first one and we need to do eight more so we'll have nine single crochets. chain one and turn and then we'll just stitch a single crochet or a row of single crochets working across we'll have our nine single crochets we'll place one single crochet in the back of the bobble stitch or in the top um, where the loop comes across and I'll show you that again when you look at your bobble stitch here it is on the front at the top you'll see those loops that go across you stitch one single crochet in there and then we stitch those nine going across make sure that you count your stitches that you only have 19 single crochets across because you don't want to accidentally add or subtract a stitch or your square will be off so now we've done two and you'll need to repeat what we just did the nine the bobble and the nine single crochet and then a row of single crochets and you'll need to repeat this three more times so that you'll have five of our bobble stitch all lined up I've completed repeating those two rows with a bobble stitch and a single crochet till I have five rows with the bobble stitch and of course that last row of single crochet across ending with my chain one and turn now we're going to do this row here in the center where we do three single crochets then we'll do seven sets of a bobble stitch and a single crochet in between and end with three single crochets don't worry it isn't hard it's just going to take a little more time than whipping through a row of single crochets all right so let's do that together First, we're going to place a single crochet in the first three stitches. So one, two, and three. Now we're going to do a bobble stitch. We've been doing them, so we know how to do them. There's my bobble stitch, then I'm going to put a single crochet in the next stitch. Then I'll just use my finger and pop it to the front. Now I'm going to do another bobble stitch. And I'll single crochet next to that one. Use my finger pop that bobble to the front and we're going to repeat doing the bobble stitch and a single crochet till we have seven sets All right, I have three, so I'm going to repeat this four more times so I have seven sets of a bobble stitch with a single crochet in between. I've completed my seven sets of bobble stitches with a single crochet in between and like I said you may have to push them to the front and then we're going to end here's my bobble stitch we're going to end with one single crochet in the last three and chain one we've done our chain one and now we're going to turn our work and we're going to do a row of single crochets all the way across now it can be a little bit challenging 
because we've done all those bobble stitches. But if you'll follow those stitches across the top and make sure you only put one in each one and that you end up with 19 again because we want to stay at 19 stitches. All right, so with the first three are simple because they're just basic single crochets. One, two, three. Now we're at that bobble stitch. Make sure we just put one in the top of that bobble stitch and then one in the single crochet, working all the way across. And remember, we want 19 single crochets. I've completed that row of single crochets, chain one and turn. Now, the next six rows, we're going to be repeating row of single crochet like we have here, then the one bobble, and we're going to repeat that three times so that we have three bobble stitches. Let me show you on the pink one again. We have our row of single crochet, then we'll do the nine bobble stitch, nine. Row of single crochet, nine single crochets, bobble stitch, and nine row of single crochet, nine single crochets, bobble stitch, nine single crochets, and then a row of single crochets to form the top portion of our cross. All right, so let's do those nine single crochets. One, two, three, there's six, <laughs> keeps falling out of there. All right, so there's my nine. I'm going to do a bobble stitch. There we go. Then back to doing one single crochet in each of the single crochets across, which will be nine. There's my chain one. And make sure you're all lined up in the center there so that your cross lays straight. We're going to turn and stitch one single crochet in each of the stitches across. And again, we'll have 19 stitches. So I've done that bobble stitch row, nine single crochets with a bobble stitch and nine single crochets, and then I did the row of single crochets. And we're going to repeat this two more times. We need to do a row with a bobble stitch and then a row of single crochets, a row with a bobble stitch, and then another row of single crochets. So we're going to repeat what we just did two more times. I repeated that row of single crochet with a bobble stitch and single crochets and then a row of single crochets two more times so I have three of the bobble stitches on the top and then one row of single crochet and we're going to finish off with a chain one and turn and one row of single crochets to get us back over to that corner and also we started with two rows of single crochet down here and so we want to end with two rows of single crochet on the top. So we're stitching one single crochet in each of those 19 single crochets across. And remember, every row should have 19 stitches. And then once we work across this row, I'm going to show you how to put a single crochet trim all the way around your square. I've completed that last row of single crochets. I'm going to chain one, but we're not going to turn working back. We're going to turn and work down the side of our work. When you're putting single cro a single crochet edge 
on rows of single crochet, what I try to do is to put one single crochet stitch in the end of each row. This first one, we're going to put three single crochets, and that's just to help move around the corner smoothly, and we'll do that on all four of the corners. And then we'll begin working one single crochet in the end of each of the rows. Now, something I do try to do is to go in the stitches, not the holes. See how I go in the stitch portion of the end of the row, not the holes. And that just gives it just a little bit better of a look. And there might be times when you feel like you need to go in the hole for it to lay better, and that's okay too. I just try to go in the stitch and not the hole. And um, when it comes to evenly crocheting down the side, you need to eyeball it. You need to look at it and see how you're going because you might be putting too many stitches and it gets bunchy or you might be putting them too far apart and there's too much space. So this is where you have to kind of um, just eyeball it like I said and there is not a set number of stitches for the trim. It's just what you think looks best. And if you feel like you've got one too many stitch in, you can always pull it out, go back to that portion, and rework it. Now, if you want to count the amount of stitches you put on the side so that it equals the same as the others, you certainly can do that. That's totally up to you. I just don't do it that way. It's just preference. All right, so now we're to the bottom corner, and we're going to be moving across where we started our chain. I'm going to move that string out of the way. We want to make sure, here's one, and we want to make sure that we put three single crochets in the corner, and that's just going to help it move around the corner smoothly so that it looks nice. And then the bottom, we can just work across those chains where we started, and that makes it nice and easy. So I'm just going to work across here, putting one single crochet in each of those chains, and then I'll work back up this side over here like I worked down this one, and then we'll make sure we put three single crochets in each corner, and then lastly we'll work across these stitches and join here. I've worked the single crochet all the way around my sides, placing three single crochets in each of the corners, and now I'm back where I started, and I'm going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch, and I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to go behind that next stitch and pull that loop to the back and tie off to the back. I think it just gives it a little bit better of a look. And then we'll just go to the back side, take our needle, and weave that end in. Turn it this way. So I want to go down those stitches. I want to turn and come back up, and turn and go back. There we go. And now my square is finished. So here's the finished green one that we did together and here's the other colors that I made and I'm going to be making some more. Like I said, I want to make mine into a lapgan, but they have lots and lots of different uses. The square measures about seven by seven inches and if you want your square to be bigger, you can always add more rows around the trim um, it also makes a nice little bag maybe for kids to carry their books or Bible in and just lots of decorating uses for it as well as using it as a prayer cloth.